What is going on people? Welcome back to another video. It's your boy LLB and in today's video I wanted to go through a list of things. I've listed 10 things that you need to stop doing in FL Studio because it's just killing the quality of your beats. Trust me when I say this like please like I mean you can give me shit down in the comments but these things will destroy your beats, your the quality of your sound and you know the and it's just not going to be helpful. I need to stop talking anyway. But what I thought I'd also do is tell you how to fix them and how to go about improving on them if you do make these mistakes. So I'm not just going to be telling you what not to do. I'm going to be telling you what to do to make them better. And before we get into the video, if you need to upgrade your drum kit, get some high quality sounds, then I've just dropped my brand new drum kit called the Uncharted Drum Kit. I'll leave a link down in the description, and there is a discount code that you guys can get 20% off, which I'll also leave down in the description too. Uh, and yeah, let's dive straight into the video kicking off with mistake number one which is Stop doing this. Do not add a limiter to the master. Like, I don't care how many Busyworks beats, tutorials you watch, don't add a limiter. The reason why is because if you haven't leveled properly and even done all the other stuff properly beforehand and you add a limiter, then everything's just gonna stop and it's all gonna be squeezed, be squished together. The kick won't sound as punchy. The 808 won't stand out at all. Everything will just sound, it just kills the quality. So don't, just don't do it. Now, here's how you remedy that situation. Soft clipper, yes. Add a soft clipper, nothing else to the master, just a soft clipper. The soft clipper will stop everything going through 0 dB, which if you don't know, if you go above 0 dB, that's when the sound will start to distort and clip, which ruins the whole quality of the beat. But a soft clipper is a hard, sort of sets a hard edge on 0 dB, so nothing goes through there. But what it also does, and like it's just some FL Studio voodoo, but when you do add that there, everything still sounds punchy. It still keeps the, the punchiness of the beat. If it doesn't, then the beat's too loud, just turn it down a little bit. And you'll be fine. Mistake number two is stop doing this. Cutting out the low end on the 808 is like it's completely counterintuitive. You are adding an 808 to give bass to add like a punchy, hard hitting low end to a beat. When you go into the EQ and just cut the low end out, like what's the point? The only time you should do that is if you're an audio engineer and you're mastering a whole song. Is that's that's when you start to cut the low end out. That's when you start doing that because when you upload to streaming sites, that's gonna help the loudness of the whole you know finished product. So when you're making a beat, just leave it. You don't have to do anything to it. just leave the low end as it is. As long as you've got a solid sample, a solid 808 sample you don't have to do anything to it so the key, so really the take home message is get some good 808s another plug for the uncharted jump kit there's some good 808s in there but anyway moving on to mistake number three which is eqing every single sound for no reason like there is literally no reason unless you have all trash sounds unless all of your drums and all your melodies and all your kicks and 808 sound terrible there's no reason to eq every single sound just for the sake of doing it it takes up cpu the samples if they sound good as they are then like there's no put in it there's no point in you know, boosting high and low ends because you're just going to take away from the fact that it's a good sample. You're just adding frequencies that weren't there, you know, for no reason. Okay. Hey, okay. now the way to get around this and the solution is again, get good drum samples, go onto um, wave supply, use the untried drum kit. There's, there's good drum kits all over the place. You, you can even get free drum kits on Reddit that have some good, decent, you know, decent sounds. So get yourself some good sounding samples before you EQ and EQ with purpose. Okay. What I mean by that is if a sound is too muddy and cut the low end out if a sound isn't you know sounding bright enough then increase the high end you know what i mean just just add eqs when you need to add them okay now mistake number four and this is a big one Don't use the sound good either. It's so bad. Like I can't tell you how bad this plugin is. Like I mean, it's good for like one purpose, and there's no point in me even saying that in this video. But anyway, stop using the good sound good either plugin. It is trash, especially when you're mixing. It is trash. So just don't use it. There's no alternative to that. Just don't use the sound good good either. Use other plugins that sound better than that. Well, that is a solution. Just don't use it. Another common mistake that I see B makers make, not only in FL Studio but in general, is this. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
stop overcomplicating your beats. You don't need 50 different sounds in the percussion. You don't need 20 different sounds in the melody. Just use, just, just keep things nice and simple. Work until you get to a point where the beat sounds good. And then, then, then put it into a beat and finish it. You don't need to keep adding things because, you know, it doesn't sound perfect in your brain. Get it to where the beat sounds good. There's a nice bounce to it. You know, you've got everything sounding kind of nice and there's a good vibe. Once you've got a good vibe, finish there, finish the beat get it mixed, put it out, good, done. Mistake number six, and like if you are literally just starting to make beats, this probably only applies to you, but I have seen it happen and I've heard it on like type beats that have been uploaded to YouTube, which is this. Do not do add, not add reverb, reverb to the 808, 808, 808 bass. Like it, like it just doesn't make sense. You're adding reverb to the low end of the song. When the low end, in, in trap especially, like you may want to add reverb to bass in like some other genres that I'm not sure, you know, people use reverb on, but, but reverb on an 808 just, just doesn't sound good. Like it just makes the whole sound sound muddy because you're adding a space effect to a low end the low end itself is already a loose frequency compared to like the high end that's nice and like sharp and crisp do not add the reverb to the low end just don't okay that's just there's no alternative just don't do that that's just that's just something to avoid mistake number three is this three key chords just sound so flat and thin and it, it's just not nice like it's unless you're stacking like 10 different sounds onto the melody then that that whole melody is just going to sound weak you know you want to fill the whole frequency spectrum and just you know have a full sounding melody so the way to do that is add notes in different octaves okay so just add a few notes in a higher octave add a few bass notes and just fill the whole melody out stack another sound on top and add the melody for that sound an octave higher or lower you know just play around with it but just but just make sure you have got a full sounding melody and if you don't know what a full sounding melody sounds like then add an eq to the master play the melody and if the whole frequency spectrum lights up and you're good to go mistake number eight and i see this too often is over compressing okay uh, when you see all these tutorials on like how to compress they put they put a great importance on the compressing the reason why they do that is because they know when to compress if you don't know when to compress don't bother with it but when you start to understand how the compressor works then start adding it to the sounds that need it okay and the only sounds that really need it is the low end and that just kind of sort of briefens out the 808 i wouldn't add a compressor to a kick like the kick's normally fine by itself as long as you get some good samples you're normally fine compression is yeah compression just normally just comes in like the post you know like the post like the mastering of a whole song when there's vocals onto it so i don't really compress that much if you want to compress do it but you know just i just just don't do it that's 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 my personal opinion mistake number nine and i hear this very often on tight beats that people upload to youtube and yeah just just roll it Make sure that your bass and your 808 is in key. Like, I don't know how many tutorials there are on this on YouTube. Like, this mistake could have been made. And I made this mistake when I very first started when I didn't watch any YouTube tutorials. But I wasn't uploading at this point. But but there's so many tutorials. I've done tutorials on how not to put your 808 out of key. But there's, there's so many resources out there for you to make this mistake that it's kind of silly that you are still making this mistake. So do not put your 808s out of key. Like, it's just, it's just don't do it. One easy way to do it is load your way into the pattern maker and follow the bass note of the melody okay follow the bass note of the melody the bass note is the first the bottom note of the melody okay and just follow that copy and paste it if you need to and then just make it sound more bouncy with you know by drawing in extra notes but make sure it's in key make sure it's in key mistake number 10 and this really only applies to people who don't have like extensive music theory and i'm one of those people so if you make beats and you don't really have a musical background this will apply to you too and that is starting a melody without adding in a scale beforehand okay the reason why you should add a scale beforehand and i'll explain what i mean by scale is it just cuts out so much work having to adjust keys to make them sound like they belong because the reason why they sound like they don't belong is because they're out of scale which is what i just said but anyway how you do this is i'll just do a quick screen recording load up an empty sampler go to the piano roll click the drop down menu at the top click on the scale that you want to use so if it's happy beat use major if it's a dark beat use the aeolian scale or the harmonic minor add that in add that in for a few octaves drag it across the whole pattern piano roll make sure that the ghost notes is enabled then when you go into other sounds you will see every key highlighted there so you will never go out of scale if you do that first you'll be able to make melodies three times quicker than you will be without doing that uh and yeah rant over how do you guys feel about that one
Jesus Christ, I've got a sore throat, shouting too much. But yeah, those are the 10 mistakes. And then, I mean, like, they're not the most common, but they are like, you know, common mistakes that I see, especially beginners make when they are making beats in FL Studio. Uh, and not just FL Studio, but you know, making beats in general. So if you are one of those guys that makes those mistakes, now you know, you don't need to do it anymore, okay? Now you know. But anyway, that's the end of the video. If you guys found any value, if you enjoyed it at all, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. Like that would help me out a whole lot. And hit the bell because otherwise YouTube will not show you any of my videos videos for some reason like the whole subscribe button is kind of pointless to be honest but anyway make sure you hit the bell because otherwise they won't show you any of my videos uh, and yeah hope you guys enjoyed this one i'll see you guys in the next one